All right, this video is to talk about using the ESP32 and I squared C to communicate with this uh, nine axis uh, gyroscope accelerometer magnetometer unit. Um, here it is on uh, Amazon. Uh, so that's the unit I'm using for this test. And then here is the ESP32 that I'm using. It's the ESP32 room 32D. Um, I don't think that really matters that much, but uh, anyway, I thought I'd show that. And uh, let me show you the uh, wiring configuration, also switch to the code. So, um, yeah, let me pick up this camera and move it over here. Okay, here we go, and I've got the diagram here for this um, ESP32 room. Um, okay, so uh, the I squared C clock is on pin 19. Let's see, that's uh, GPIO 19. Uh, I'm using a green wire for that. I'll show you that on the breadboard in a second. And then the um, SDA line, the data line is on um, GPIO 18. So it's very simple. There's two wires, the green wire and the white wire. So that's the clock and the data. And then I've got uh, power on the red wire and then ground on the black wire. Um, I am feeding it with five volts. Um, this unit does have a um, voltage regulator, so you can feed it with either five volts or 3.3 volts. And I'm using five volts because I found that the magnetometer on this board was actually freezing. Uh, and while it was running, if I use 3.3 volts, so I'm giving it 5 volts for these tests. All right, I will put a link below to the code uh, that will be stored on my GitHub. And um, I did work with um, GPT-4 to develop this code. Um, here's your include statements. Uh, it's using uh, free, R2, T, free RTOS, uh, the driver for the I2C, and ESP systems. Here's a configuration of the pins for the clock and the data lines of the I2C on GPIO 19 and 18. There's a bunch of other stuff that's the configuration of the uh, I2C, um, just port, uh, etc. There's various things. I don't understand all the details. Um, and then there's some registers that are set up um, for, yeah, the various sensors that are in there. Um, the gyro, the accelerometer, and then the magnetometer. And um, there's an initialization method. There's a method to write bytes. There's a method to read bytes. Um, Another function here to set up the, the task to get the thing running. Uh, and then there's a while loop that just runs forever that grabs the data from the accelerometer, the gyro, and the magnetometer, and prints that out in a fixed column format. Um, and then I've just got some convenience methods in here to set the accelerometer range. It has a range of um, from plus or minus 2 Gs to plus or minus 16 Gs. It's a 16-bit um, ADC on board. So depending on what range you set up, you get more or less a resolution. Um, here's the same convenience method for setting the gyro range. It goes from uh, plus or minus 250 degrees per second to 2000 degrees per second. And here's the uh, convenience method to set the mode of the magnetometer. Um, in any event, um, the main method then just initializes the um, I2C as the master. So the ESP32 runs as the master, and then the um, smaller board there runs as the slave, which is, you know, providing the, the data for the three different axes or three different degrees of freedom, the accelerometer, the gyro, and the magnetometer. And then it kicks off the task. And that's the extent of the code uh, I'll go to my console here and run this thing. Let's see. It's actually running, so I can just monitor it. 
And there we will see the data start spitting out. Uh, it's got the accelerometer first, the X, Y, and Z, the gyro X, Y, and Z, and then the magnetometer X, Y, and Z. Uh, so that's, that's it. I'll move this thing around so you see the values changing a little bit. And that's the extent of it. I wanted to play with uh, I2C and some sort of a real-world sensor. Uh, so the code is working, and I will check it into my GitHub and provide the link below. All right. Thanks for watching.